नमस्कार टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द बाय प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ सेरिकल्चर इंडस्ट्री सेरिकल्चर इन्वॉल्व थ्री डिफरेंट एक्टिविटीज द फर्स्ट इज अ मोरिकल्चर और द कल्टिवेशन ऑफ मलबरी फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ हार्वेस्टिंग द लीव्स फॉर फीडिंग द सिल्क वॉर्म्स द सेकेंड इज द रेरिंग ऑफ द सिल्क वॉर्म्स फ्रॉम द एग टू हार्वेस्टिंग ऑफ काकोन्स and the third reeling of the cocoons to produce raw silk in each of these activities a number of by products popularly called as waste are generated as all these by products have a market and can be put to good use it is claimed that in sericulture nothing is a waste only a by product by products of moriculture man uses all the parts of mulberry tree for different purposes its leaves alone are used in sericulture but when the mulberry garden is maintained for silk worm rearing other parts are spared for other uses however a phytotechnological approach to moriculture enables conversion of all the parts of mulberry plant not used for rearing into high value products unfortunately the possible and prospective use of various primary and secondary metabolites produced by the mulberry plant after use of silkworm rearing are mostly put to such common place uses as compost silage fodder fuel and only rarely for timber and furniture its potential medicinal use is grossly overlooked leaves are used for silkworm rearing only 50 to 60% of the leaves of a mulberry plant are utilized for silkworm rearing discarded leaves include over mature diseased damaged dried and decomposed as well as those in the excess of the requirement of the silkworm rearing these can be harvested shade dried and incorporated into semi synthetic artificial dyes for the silkworm they can also be exploited for their medicinal value but unfortunately in many countries the only uses they are put to our cattle feed and as a natural mulches in mulberry garden prune shoots generally pruning of the mulberry plant is coupled with rearing in such a way that the prune shoots are directly fed to mature worms prune branches and leaves in excess of feeding are generally used as cattle feed manure or mulches for mulberry garden or as fuel the longer shoots are also used as props the rejected plants could be conveniently diverted as raw material for the paper pulp industry or furniture or sports good manufacturers industry but such uses are rarely exploited by the farmer even small pieces of operation could be converted into fiber board and particle board and used in furniture making by products of rearing the major waste generated during rearing include excess of harvested leaves accounting for 10 to 20% of the harvest unfed leaves 20 to 30% of the leaves furnished at each feed larval litter 60% of the ingested food and exuvia of the molted larvae apart from this weak diseased or unhealthy worms rejected for rearing and dead larvae were also constituted as waste they are collected daily during bed cleaning the following uses have been found for them litter as compost the bed refuse collected as litter is generally buried or burned for the fear of transmission of diseases when buried the organic matter converts into compost and forms valuable organic manure the manure adds sufficient amount of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium to the soil because the amount of these three substances present in the leftover mulberry leaf and in the silkworm litter is 3.1% 0.5% and 1.5% respectively and 1.4 0.4 and 0.8 respectively litter as animal feed 
Silkworm litter is used primarily as animal feed from cows, sheep, pigs, buffaloes and poultry. Chicks feed on them lay more and larger eggs because the silkworm contains high protein content. The eggs laid by hand fed with 20% silkworm litter mixed with a normal feed contain more xanthophyll. Byproducts of drainage operations. Cut open cocoons, pierced cocoons, unused cocoons and dead moths and discarded eggs are the waste products produced in granages. Cut open cocoons. In granages, where sex separation is carried out manually by cutting open the cocoons, the empty cut open cocoons come out as grade 1 silk waste that fetches a good price from the spun silk industry. Brazil sends these cut open cocoons en masse to Italy where they are processed into spun silk. Pierced cocoons. They are the empty shells of the cocoons from which the moths emerged from the seed production centers. They are called farfalati in Italy. Cocoons persist in France and digara in Japan. They represent after realer's waste called strosa in Italy, nubs in English, the best kind of waste giving 40 to 45 percent of the yield in shipping. In India, these along with Ozepia's cocoon serve as raw materials for the hand spinning industry to form silks such as Gicha and Katia used in producing fabrics for gents cheddar, ladies scarves, curtains, tablecloths and caps. Waste moths. Moths not used for seed purposes, dead moths and discarded eggs are generally dumped in pits and allowed to form compost with no commercial utilization in mind. But as some of these discarded moths and eggs might be pebrinized and could spread pebrin to newly raised seed cocoon, it is better to burn them. On the other hand, silk moths discarded after eclosion or mating are now used to brew medicinal wines for ancient Chinese preparations. The best known is a male silkworm moth wine produced by Shanxi. Sericultural Technology Station. According to Wang Xia, a senior agronomist there, the elixir is used in treatment of impotency, abnormal menstruation and menopausal symptoms. Byproducts of reeling. On average, about 35 percent by weight of raw silk produced in the reeling industry constitutes waste. It is classified into three types, waste from cocoons, reeling waste and thread waste. Waste from cocoons. Waste from cocoons prior to reeling includes cocoons discarded in the reeling unit and the flaws or blaze or kiba obtained during cocoon brushing. Discarded cocoons. Flimsy cocoons, urinated cocoons, melted cocoons, double cocoons, flossy cocoons or some of the defective cocoons that cannot be reeled and are sorted out prior to cooking and discarded. These are called galitame in Brazil, fanders in France, serachi in Spain and usukavi in Japan. In addition, these are pierced cocoons waste due to either moth emergence or emergence of oozy maggots. Generally, except a double cocoons, these are used in spinning industry. Double cocoons are reeled in India on Charaka and in other countries on separate reeling basins in filature to produce dupion silk. In Brazil, Double cocoons are used to produce an irregular and thick silk that is exported to Japan where a special thread is manufactured for use in parachutes. In India, defective cocoons from the filature 
and the cottage reeling units are sent to the Charakas reeling units for reeling a poor quality silk used in handloom industry and those that cannot be reeled on Charaka are used in hand spinning rather than sent to mills for machine spinning. Countries with the spinning factory process the silk waste themselves. In Russia, cocoon depots are actually combining having reeling, spinning and weaving facilities. Countries like Brazil which have no facility for spinning exports these along with the cut open cocoon shells in toto to Italy for the poorly grade ways for the spinning industry because they require preliminary processing to remove the pupae and also because silk recovery on weight basis is poor. Floss waste. Floss is an entangled mass of pure silk thread. It is removed during classification by automatic machines in temperate countries, blended with wool and spun to produce the fabric used in linings for jackets and blouses. In tropical countries, it is removed only during cooking and is collected as cooker's waste. Reeling waste. Reeling waste include cooker's waste, reeler's waste, basin refuse or boiled off waste. Cooker's waste. Nearly 35 percent by weight of raw silk produced during the process of cooking cocoons prior to reeling constitutes waste. In the floating system of reeling, cooking may be done in the reeling basin itself as in the case of charaka reeling or in the separate units like the open pan and the three pan. The outer floss layer of the cocoons gets entangled and becomes unwind to the ladles used in the transferring of the cocoons to the reeling basins. In the sunken system of reeling, the floss is removed after cooking by manually or mechanical brushing and collected separately. This type of waste is also a good quality waste sent to spinning mills. Boil of waste. Defective cocoons that become overcooked and water laden due to water entering the compact shells are unreliable. The percentage incidence of such cocoons depend on cocoon quality. Boiled of cocoons are discarded during both cooking and reeling of cocoons and are referred to as burst open cocoons and commercially called jelly gudu or water jolly in India. Reeless waste. This represents 20 to 25 percent of the silk handle but the proportion varies depending on the quality of the cocoons and condition of handling. Two types of waste are produced at the reeling basin due to reelers activity. The first is the silk waste brushed from outer layer of the cocoons by the reeler in the process of end finding and casting of the thread. It is variously called as strasa, nubs, kibizo and jute. Another type of waste removed by the reeler is called hard waste. It represents the bits of the silk thread produced during the formation of the breaks and rejoining of curtains. It too has different names in different countries. Basin refuse. It includes the unreliable portion of the cocoons left behind the reeling basin. The final parchment layer surrounding the pupae and called the silk pellet is too thin to be reeled. Pellet represents about 150 percent of the weight of the silk reel because it includes pupae in the cocoon also. Basin residue is very inferior quality waste giving a shape yield only to 3 to 4 percent. Generally, it is not sent to the spinning mill in its original state but as koto. In India, the pellets are kept immersed in hot water for 24 to 36 hours then beaten to squeeze out the pupae. The silk layer is thoroughly washed and generally used in hand spinning on India but spun on machines in other countries. Pupa waste. 
the most common use to which the pupa is put is compost which does not fully exploit its nutritive values. In the entire life cycle of the silkworm, the stage in which maximum nutrients and energy stored is in pupal stage only. In parts of India and China, silkworm pupae are considered delicious and extensively eaten when the silk has been reeled off. They are cooked in very hot water or roasted and treated as a delicacy by tribals in some parts of the northeastern provinces of India. The next best use for the pupae is as feed for animals. In Brazil, the chrysalis powder is used in animal rations. It is often used as a choice fish bait. As cattle do not relish the unpleasant odor of fresh or pre-cooked pupae, only defatted ones are used in cattle feed. Pupal oil is used for burning lamps and preparing homemade soaps, glycerin and cosmetics. From the defatted pupae, protein, artificial fibers and membranes are made. The protein is also used for animal feed. Peptones are another useful product from pupal protein. The disaccharide trehalose can also be obtained from larvae and pupae. Thread waste. The thread waste also called as straza includes all the bits of the threads waste formed during the knotting and cleaning operations in various stages of making the silk thread. Reeling waste. During reeling, defects in the reel filament such as non-uniform thickness, gum spots, sliced ends and broken threads are spotted and removed. These are called re-reeling waste and is a non-twisted silk waste. Throwers waste. This type of waste is formed during such process such as twisting, throwing, weaving, knitting of raw silk. It also includes any length of thread which for any fault of the twisting has to be discarded during the throwing process. This waste is called as twisted silk.